Well, here we are at Bob's Barn Workshop at Black Lake. Yes, the guy who sold me the plans calls me Two Barn Bob because I built two barns by the same plans, basically. This one has rooms upstairs. The one at home just has an open loft for uh, storage. But anyway, we're going to do an episode today and finish up those LED uh, under cabinet lights that I promised you with the, uh, the uh, coffee bar here in the... Uh, trailer so uh, we're gonna go inside and do that right away. Alright fans let's revisit this uh, Black Lake Cottage coffee bar thingy I did a couple of weeks ago uh, Mama's using it every day now the dishwasher works great we've done a few loads of dishes every day uh, one a day at least uh, what I want to do today is put in those lights I promised you so I'll get this stuff cleaned off and we'll go put those lights on. Alright well, I've gathered up what I think is the tools, all the tools I'm going to need to do this, which shouldn't be bad. An electric drill. Um, I'm going to hang these lights with a 632 flathead screws from the inside of the cabinet so that I can drill through and sink the heads so they're perfectly flush. I forgot to get dish dishes out of here, so... Give it two seconds. All right. Um. The hardest thing is going to be that I use 12 gauge wire, which according to code on this uh, wiring that I put in here for the counter has to be 12 gauge going into this little tiny light fixture. And I've decided from this light fixture I'm going to tandem over to the other one on this side. And when I do that over here, I'm going to drill a hole and I'm going to run actually flat three conductor lamp cord. It has hot, neutral, and ground to ground the fixture. It's a smaller gauge, but it'll be a heck of a lot easier to work with in this little tiny compartment I have. And it'll be just fine. I mean... Uh, the lights are only on when we're using them and they're off. And I've got a, I've also checked that that's the off position for that switch. If you're not competent or or uh, confident about working on electrical stuff, do it with the circuit off. Make sure you check the circuit or have somebody who knows how to check it for you. I've been doing this for 40 some years, so I'm pretty comfortable. I'm just going to put some tape on that side. Don't bump it. The first thing I want to do is actually locate this fixture where I want it to be and make some marks. I'm just going to kneel down here. i got to be careful not to break the leads to my little lights. And I'm just going to eyeball it under here. Guesstimation. Alright. Then I'll drill up through first. Alright, that's fine. The next thing I want to do is I need to make a knockout in this. I have to be really careful of these little fine wires. They can't stand too much yanking and cranking. I have Romex connectors here, which we can put both wires, one in and one out. It's got to go in this knockout, which 
the light fixture is going to flip this way when it goes up. So I need to knock this one out. I'm being just thin sheet metal. Once you bend it a little bit, you just rock it out back and forth. And that'll fatigue. Come right out for you. that Romex connector has I'm sweating already the Romex connector has uh, two set screws on it it has this little lock nut screw it put it through your hole and screw her in Careful not to beat up Mama's countertop. Oh, I'm sorry, Kitty. <laughs> I just kicked the cat. Not watching where I was going. We got a new kitten. He's a little monster. Sorry, Teddy. So now you just compete on this with a screwdriver. We'll try twisting it. that wire into the back of the fixture. I think I'm going to drill my holes first though. So. Found a couple of bits that look promising. on the 632 is a pretty small so I'm just using the chamfer on this uh, now the heads will be below so the wife's dishes won't hang up on them so hot today. That's alright, that fits right down through there. I'm just going to screw it right through the wood. That'll be real nice. Now I'm going to just slip this wire through there, and that is just long enough to catch that nut, which is what I wanted. I didn't want a lot of this screw sticking into the fixture. And I'll put the other one on, and it'll be temporarily in the air here. 
now if you got fluorescent types that have the tubes in them, this is a little bit more of a pain. Because you can't have hardly any of this bolt stick through because it hits the tube. Now if I knew when I tighten these down so it would suck that head of that screw right down into the wood cut too. from this one over to the other light and I think I'm going to put it right in the middle because that'll support itself if it's short enough and that will fit through that hole so I've got a fairly large drill bit here Just winging it right now. And I'm just going to drill through from the other side. But to create that passage, I just got to look at the other hole. Break time over. Um, what I need to do at this time is cut the insulation off on this 12 gauge wire. So I'm going to cut it as close to the connector as I can because I don't want to have to try to bend it over too tightly, or I need to bend it over tightly to get it around the corner here to these connections. Be careful of that exact or that. Utility knife, she's a sharp one. Alright. Alright. New blade, you know. Cut that back. Alright. Now I gotta figure out where this ground wire is gonna go. The yellow ground wire on this part of it. So that can work right here. I might as well get this other wire stripped in the, the hole too. I think the, the green ground wire is embedded in there, but I don't think the neutrals and the hot wire are identified other than one side has a ridge on it. That one's smooth. That one's ridgy. So whatever one you prefer, I don't know what the standard is, but as long as I hook it up right here, I ain't going to make no never mind. Oh, stick my head in the way here. So you can see my bald head. 
I'm sure you appreciate it. If I had a way to wire these up without having to do it laying on the countertop, it sure would be nice. Alright. So that guy's up in there too. And that wire's laying nice and flat. I think I'm going to tighten up the connector. You just got to get it up snug so the wires don't vibrate because there actually is vibration from the 60 cycle current going through it. But seeing these aren't drawing a lot of current, there shouldn't be a lot of vibrations. Uh, we're just going to gently tighten that up so it holds that wire up tight. Oh, Alright, I'm going to get something to kneel on here. I'm going to get something to kneel on. Sorry, put the camera down. first and get them in the back. Just listen to Molly Hatchet, it's in my head. I got some little yellow wire nuts that I plan on using on these. I wish I had my good wire stripper. For lack thereof, I'm using that dang thing. Small yellow wire nuts. Uh, there's probably better ways to do this. I like to twist any twister or any stranded wires together first, and then twist it around here a little bit. Get that baby started right on there. And that stuff bites pretty darn good. And pull on those wires, you know they're on there good and tight. Alright. What am I going to use for the neutral? I'm going to use the plain wire for the neutral. People call it the ground, it's not the ground, it's the neutral. The ground is the green wire, and it's referenced to, to earth and ground. I 
I hate these things. I hate soft wire nuts. Alright. See if we can get that to bite. Alright. It's this tinned wire that's the problem. I'm gonna cut the tin wire off. Make the short wire even shorter, of course. I have them wrapped around. And I like to get them a little bit longer than the solid lead. Try a different wire nut. Sometimes they get worn out too. This had a switch in it, but I took it out. Well, I'm going to have to bring that wire in farther. I'm going to loosen that connector a little bit. Give me some more slack on the soft wire. strippers here so I'm using a knife. Not the best scenario but I just kind of roll it against the knife blade but be careful. If you roll too hard you'll cut right through into your finger and that's a booboo you don't want to feel. Luckily the second one will be a lot easier than this because Soft, softer wire nut on this. I believe it's called a Scotch block. That isn't hard like a wire nut. Alright, now I gotta try to jam all this crap up in there in some sort of manner that makes sense. This guy just has little tabs up in there that will pop the front back in under there. So we gotta get them. Oh no, they go right there. Watch my mouth. the other end. 
Now if I make sure these are separated down here, which they are, I should be able to turn that on and get light. Bingo. I'm going to do the same thing at the other end. Just uh, I got the smaller wire to hook up. Just one fixture. I'm going to skip that for now. I'll just look at the finished product. I just want to show this quick. There's the installation of the first one and how I ran the wire across and over. I had to go into the center hole in this one because the ballast, I would have to try to get past the ballast. So I decided to come in the center. Uh, I'll show you when I get it hooked up. Alright, well, the light fixtures are up. They are on. That one has the shield on it. This one, I haven't put the shield on. Now, these are LEDs. These should burn for eternity, practically. Had to run the wire back up in the back like so. You can see how I uh, recess the heads by chamfering the holes on these screws. Um, Let's see if I can get that cover up on there. Oh, can you see this? Let's try it over here. Sorry about banging the camera all over. That little groove fits right there. Now this is the way typically the covers on even your fluorescent fixtures work. They just snap in. And there we go. So there's another little uh, project here at Black Lake with Bob's Barn Workshop. I worked up a good sweat today. It's hot and humid here today, even though it's, uh, what, the 19th of September. <coughs> but I'll be back. I'm going to do a video on how I upgraded the... Uh, I added electric start to my outboard motor, uh, created a control box with a uh, lawn tractor battery in it to, to, to run the starter and the uh, nav lights, and I actually added a uh, small bilge pump so I don't have to try to bail it by hand. But until next time, everybody stay safe. God bless. We'll see you later here at Bob's Barn Workshop.